Hey everyone, Dave K here today, and today I want to go over wellness in the parks. How to make sure that you're staying healthy and well when you're in the parks, whether that's Disney, Universal, or somewhere else. And when you're on a vacation, if you're on an extended trip to some theme parks and that sort of thing, how can you make sure that you're staying healthy and in good condition? Let's do it. My number one suggestion for staying well in the parks or on an extended vacation, you can probably already guess this one, it's making sure that you drink water. Yes, you know me well enough at this point. I always talk about drinking water. Okay, Dave, we get it with the water. But a couple things I want to touch on with drinking water, and one of those things is making sure you find those critical times to drink water. Because a lot of the times you're thinking to yourself, you know, I just gotta go and hit all the rides. And yes, I'll get water, but you know, I'll think of it as I think of it, and I'm gonna hit on those rides. My suggestion to you is this. On the way into the park, that's the best time to grab the water. Because there's a lot of places you'll be walking by to get to whatever attractions you're trying to go to. There's usually a long corridor that leads you to wherever you're headed those can be great places to get water maybe there's a Starbucks around there I'm thinking in my head right now I'm thinking Magic Kingdom I'm walking down the main entrance of Magic Kingdom perfect time for me to get a big old glass of water there maybe even as much as almost a liter that I can get in the Starbucks right on the right of the Magic Kingdom drink that all up front or carry it with me as I walk around the park great way to get through one liter there in my Disney day and another way let's say I'm on the way out and now I'm walking out this time I'm walking out of Islands of Adventure at Universal Studios, and as I'm walking out, I'm going by the Marvel World. Okay, Marvel's got a bunch of great places. I can bring them a bottle of water, and they can refill my cup of water for me as well. Or I can drop in that Starbucks over there, and they'll refill my water over there as well. Or they'll give you those little cups. Generally at Disney, they'll give you the full-size cups. Universal only gives you the smaller cups. But just things that I've learned getting water at different theme parks for you to keep in mind. But that's something to, to make sure you're focusing on, is when to get water. And I strongly advise on the way in is a great time to get water. On the way out is a great time to get water. And another thing you may not consider is quantity of water and when you drink it. If you drink all of that water on the way in right at the beginning, or you drink that full glass of water on the way out, it's best to drink water, generally for me, to make sure that I can stay focused on my objective of getting everything done if I drink all that water sort of in one sitting. Now, not an unhealthy amount of water in one sitting, and take it with you, you don't have to sit down, but if you drink it all sort of at once, it'll help you get that hydration in quickly, and you can focus on those other activities, and hopefully you won't have to stop as often for other activities. It allows you to focus on the fun, so just something to keep in mind there too. My second suggestion for making sure you stay well in the parks is make sure that you wear good shoes. Now you will do a lot of walking if you're in these theme parks and you're trying to get everything done like me or a lot of friends. You're trying to make sure you make the most of your adventure to the parks. You're going to be walking a lot. So you want to make sure you wear shoes that are good for your feet, not too small, that don't cramp any of your toes. And something I like to do is switch off shoes every other day as well. So let's say I have a couple nice pairs of shoes. I'll wear this one today, I'll wear the next one tomorrow, and I'll go back and forth between those two pairs of shoes. That way I don't wear out one pair of shoes too quickly. So just something for you to keep in mind there as well. You also want to get off your feet when you can. Rest your feet when you can. So if you're going to be sitting down for lunch or if you're going to be sitting down for some rides, that's a great time to rest your feet a little bit. When you get back, let's say you're staying at a resort from your trip, you want to make sure you take a seat and kind of sit back and relax. Or maybe you're going to swim in the pool or something along those lines. If you can do something seated or do something without standing up, that'll probably feel a little bit better on your feet than continuing to walk around or maybe jumping on the treadmill. I think probably if you're going to do some exercise on your trip, which I do recommend. Exercise is always a good idea. I would stick with the push-ups and the sit-ups. Maybe you don't need the treadmill when you're on your trip if you're already getting 10, 15 miles a day. Really depends on how many miles you're walking a day, but that's just a personal thought is if you're doing that many steps, you really don't need to be focusing on the treadmill exercises so much as some of those other exercises, the muscular ones, and you can allow those steps to be had in the parks instead. Tip number three is look for, actively seek out, and eat the generally healthier or reasonable foods. Now, the reason I suggest this is it's so easy to get pulled off course by any other sugary delicious items. There's churros, there's ice cream, there's funnel cakes, there's Dole Whips, and those all just came to mind immediately. Literally just thought those up on the spot. And there's so many more treats, sugary treats, ice creams and stuff like that, sodas and that kind of thing that you can get along the way, which really aren't the best for you. So if you can actively seek out those healthier items, maybe you love honey roasted peanuts, honey roasted almonds or something along those lines, or the, the sugar coated ones. 
Now, they're not the number one best thing for you, but they are better than just eating candy instead. So if that's something you like, you may say, okay, this is my somewhat healthy option. Let me seek that out, and I know where it is in the park. And you can head for that location, or on your way, you're going to stop by that food cart and grab yourself those almonds. So just something to keep in mind. Know where the food that you like is, those snacks that you like that keeps you full and healthy and also happy that you can enjoy, and focus on those as opposed to letting yourself get pulled off by an ice cream or something that smells really good. You know, just the other day, I was walking by this shop in Marvel Land. I was walking out of Islands of Adventure, walked by Marvel Land, and I smelled something really good. And I think it was pretzels and that sort of thing. But it's, it's really easy to get pulled off course by those things. So just something to keep in mind. If you know where the healthy things are, and you eat your meals, and you eat your snacks at the right times, and healthier things, you can stay on course with being healthy on your trip. Number four suggestion for you here is make sure you're getting enough sleep. Plan out, am I going to be a morning person on this trip or am I gonna be a night person? Am I gonna be a park opener or a park closer? Or maybe if this is a trip for you of a limited time, you don't come back that often, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna be both. I'm gonna be the park opener and I'm gonna be the park closer. Know how many hours of sleep you're gonna get, know how much sleep you normally need, and know how much sleep you're gonna need to catch up on either before your trip or after your slip trip to make up for all of that time that you spent not getting sleep and focusing on having fun on your trip. Just something to keep in mind there. So let's say I come on a trip and I normally like eight or nine hours of sleep and I'm only getting six because it takes me maybe an hour each way to get back from my resort to the parks. I wanna make sure that I'm catching up on that sleep. Maybe getting a couple extra hours before my trip and getting those couple extra hours on the way back as well. Maybe you can sleep on a plane or something along those lines. Really depends on your sleeping habits. But something to keep in mind is making sure you're catching up on that sleep at some point. Or if you're saying, I'm gonna do the mornings, I'm gonna get early magic hours, but I'm not gonna stay for late nights. Or maybe I'm gonna catch late nights and I'm not gonna catch early mornings. Just something to keep in mind. Make sure you know what you're doing, how much sleep you're getting, how you're gonna feel with that much sleep and adjust some of these other things like make sure you're eating enough and make sure that you're being positive enough to account for the fact that you're not getting enough sleep, which may kind of take a toll on your mind as well as physically. Number five is make a plan. You don't want to stress yourself out. Talking a little bit about mentally, staying mentally healthy and well on the trip here. You don't want to walk away from your trip saying, oh, my number one thing was this attraction, but I didn't get to do it. So what I would advise is prioritize. Say, these are my number one attractions. I got to do those. And these are the number two shows, and I got to see those. But then here are the number three, maybe, snacks that I want to try. And if I don't catch those this time, I'll catch them another time. Or maybe if I didn't catch those shows, I'll watch some vlogger who posted that video. And I can always catch the show that way. So just something to keep in mind. Try to prioritize and hit those number one attractions for yourself. Make that plan and say, I'm going here this day, here that day. So you don't stress yourself out on the adventure saying, how can I do it all? I've already missed this many things. And that way you'll be able to, again, maximize your efficiency, focus on those number one priorities, and kind of work your way down that priority scale so that you get to do as much of the stuff that you want to do as you can. You may say, well, you know, I really want to hit all these things at Animal Kingdom and a couple things at Hollywood Studios and that sort of thing. Maybe you plan a day for each park. You say, okay, I'm going to go Hollywood Studios at night because maybe it's a little bit more busy because there's only a couple things I want to do over there. And I want to do all the morning stuff at the Animal Kingdom because I'm being a morning person on this trip. There's a lot of logistics to consider on that front, but make sure you're kind of doing that mental math and accounting for what you want to do. Number six, the number six suggestion here for me is make sure that you're snacking and getting water, maybe even in your resort. Consider leaving some at your resort if you're staying in a resort before you go to the parks and grabbing that water bottle and that bag of almonds or something along those lines as you're on the bus on the way to the parks because it's very easy and it's very tempting to say, oh, you know what, I'm good. Like as soon as you hit the park gate, it's very tempting to just run for your favorite ride since there's no crowds right now, you'll be the first one in line. So maybe you wanna bring Bring that bag of almonds with you and you want to bring that water bottle just as a starter snack that you can eat on that first few rides then you can come back around for more breakfast a little bit later if you have that snack first thing in the morning again it'll help you kind of feel more energized and actually make it through to that point where you actually decide okay i really need food now as opposed to barely making it to where the food actually is Number seven is don't forget to eat. You may wanna plan your meals. So this is a suggestion I have is plan your meals so that you don't forget to eat. Maybe you're just gonna plan a location. Oh, I really wanna get a Ronto wrap. So I'm gonna make sure that when I go on the Galaxy's Edge, when I go to Galaxy's Edge and I catch the new ride, I'm gonna make sure that I stop by and get a Ronto wrap and eat that regardless of the time of day that it is. Or maybe you're a big fan of a particular venue and you're gonna say, okay, I'm 100% going to the Mythos restaurant. So let me make that reservation. 
location. I'm going to call in now and say I'll be there at 8 p.m. And if you make those reservations or if you make that plan of locations, you're less likely to forget where you're eating. And if you see that you're in the neighborhood of that place, you'll say, okay, yes, time for me to grab food. Because for me, at least, when I get super excited and super into something, I can easily forget about food and just go all day working on something or playing games or running around theme parks and forget about food completely. You may have seen me even do this in the past. So if you plan out where you're going to eat each day in each park, that kind of thing, it'll help you make sure that you get the food that you need. And number eight, remember that there is always next time. So if you forget to catch something or if you miss something or if you really wanted to see an attraction you didn't get to catch it this time, don't let that stress you out. Remember you can always catch it in the future or you can always catch a video of someone else sharing it with you. You can always kind of put it on your agenda and make it a higher priority for the next time you go. I know not everyone gets to go to the same place twice when they go on vacation, but it's just something to keep in mind is that'll probably be there if you do decide to go back in the future maybe depending upon how popular the attraction is and if it's not there you can always catch a video that someone's shared with it fortunately we're in an age where social media can share most of these adventures and attractions with you depending upon the attraction or the adventure just something to keep in mind and maybe you will even say I'm gonna prioritize the things I know I can't catch online I need to catch these attractions in person but these shows I can see online you may say that to yourself as well what did you think of this list of items? Do you agree that these are good tips to make sure that you're staying well, healthy, happy, and having fun in the parks? Do you have any other suggestions that people should add to their list to make sure that they're doing their park day or their park week right? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for being a part of the fun with me today. If you haven't already, for more fun adventures, wellness, food, and more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed. And check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv backslash Dave K. You'll see that in the description. And on the end screen, you'll see Dave K Media, my second YouTube channel for some gaming adventures. Make sure you check that as well. Thanks so much for being a part of the fun with me today. And until next time, play on.